Hey, hey, what's up, everybody? I have a great episode for you today, but to start, I want to ask you this. Can you draw a rectangle? Can you draw a triangle? Can you draw a circle? All right. I hope the answer is yes, because what we're going to do is we're going to take those three shapes, we're going to combine them in different ways to pretty much draw any form control that you can imagine. So we're going to cover a lot of the basics. Forms are an essential part of any user experience, and we're going to take a dive into this. Let's get rolling here. Uh, some of the elements that we're drawing we've seen in previous videos. You might recall that we used a line to represent a basic label or line of text that's going to be important today in drawing some of these form elements. And let's start with the most basic. So we're gonna draw a box. That first shape I mentioned in the intro doesn't have to be perfect. If you have a straight edge, I would strongly encourage using it. And to start, this box is going to become a text field. So what you can do is we can just draw a little stroke here. Looks like an I-beam. And there you go. This is reminiscent of the cursor when uh, we're about to start typing in the text field. The rectangle creates our text field border, and we can add a nice line up to here to indicate that there is a label. All right, let's do another variation. So I'm just gonna draw a slightly taller box here. Got our four sides going. I'm gonna add another label indicator on the top here. And really, we can use this symbol to represent a text area. So if you think about the last time, perhaps you might have filled out a product review on an e-commerce site. You likely used a text area that enables you to enter a lot of text, multiple sentences, sometimes paragraphs. And in some cases, these fields can even scroll. So we can add a little line here, a second line, and add some nice hatching here and just indicate a scroll bar if we wish. Now, you could actually add, if you wanna show that this um, text area has been uh, populated, you can add any number of lines in here using uh, some of the styles that we looked at in previous videos. Okay, so just like that, two form controls. Pretty cool, right folks? All right, so let's do uh, a couple others here. Um, let's go back and so let's take a look now at um, we're going to revisit that text field but we're going to do something a little different this time so instead of making this a text field um, before we get into it I guess I'll add my label at the top here we're going to add a triangle at the end here and you can even fill this in and can you guess what this is you probably already guessed it we just added one simple shape and this text field became a drop down menu another key element in a lot of forms so pretty cool right another thing we can do is we can draw a box and this box should be smaller and kind of square I'm gonna add a label here and I'm just gonna add a check mark inside the box. And you guessed it, this is the start of a checklist. And we can actually just add a few more of these. I'm gonna kind of take a systematic approach to this here by drawing my vertical lines at the same time and horizontal lines just for speed. And there you go, we have the start of a checklist. So as you can see, this isn't rocket science, uh, very basic shapes here. We're basically creating some nice, iconic, even symbolic representations of these form controls. Okay, so for the last one, if you think about um, 
this checklist we just drew, if you change the boxes to circles, you basically have a radio button group. And the neat thing about radio buttons is where check boxes, you can select any number of the list items at once. You can only select one button in the radio group. So to do that, we draw circles instead of the boxes using our circle template. Okay, so if you think about a lot of forms, there's always some sort of action we take at the end. Perhaps it's a submit button. If you're typing an email, it could be a send button. Um, even a lot of dialogues have controls that are buttons like cancel buttons and so forth. So I'm gonna show you how to draw that right now. And we're just gonna draw a nice, kind of thick but horizontal rectangle here. We're gonna turn this into a submit button. Now because my handwriting isn't the greatest, and that's okay, so I'm not trying to win an art contest, I'm actually going to create some construction lines here so that my button label looks nice. Okay, and now I'm going to write the word submit. fills out the rectangle quite nicely. I'm also gonna add one other little accent here because our text fields kind of look like this. I want this to have an affordance to make it look that, like it's uh, touchable or something I could interact with and click on with a mouse. So I'm gonna add an inner border. This is just a nice little stylized piece I'm adding here. And once this dries, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and erase those construction lines I use to align my button label text. And voila, there you go. We have a few more form controls. Pretty cool stuff, right? Now, for any one of these, you'll notice that I used a a line to represent the form label in some design presentations or if you're sharing your drawings with your colleagues sometimes we have to do a better job of describing what these lines are so you could actually take the line on top of any one of these text fields or text areas and you can actually replace it with a handwritten label now we can take any of these form controls. So three basic shapes. We used a circle for the radio group. We used variations of rectangles for the text fields, the drop downs, the button, and the text area. We also used a triangle to indicate a drop down menu. So three shapes, pretty simple, combined in different ways. Look at the power behind that and what we can do with it. Now we can take these objects and stack them any which way to create any sort of input form that we wish. We can create a representation of a product review widget on an e-commerce site. We can combine them to create an email reply screen. The possibilities are endless here. So there you have it. We have several different ways in which we can draw forms through combining different shapes. We added a whole plethora of elements to our digital library. And if you like this video, if you like other content on this channel, I'd like to encourage you to check out my upcoming book, Drawing Product Ideas. It really does a deeper dive into all of the work that we've done on this channel. It's meant to help you build your confidence at the whiteboard, because let's face it, a lot of key product decisions are made at the whiteboard. And if you're not a designer, let's say you're an engineer, a web developer, a product manager, even a project manager, could be a subject matter expert, UX researcher, you name it. It's important that you're engaged in this process. And this book is going to help you communicate better with your design team so you can play a more active role in the design process. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. Go check out my book and I look forward to drawing with you again soon. Thank you.